In the previous lecture, we have seen how you can alter the amplitude of a signal in order to convey a discrete set of messages. In this lecture, we will be using an approach wherein the information that you want to convey is embedded in the phase of the waveform. That is, we take a set of messages and generate different waveforms for each message and these waveforms differ in the phase. This approach is called phase shift keying as you have seen in the lecture. This approach is very distinct from the amplitude variation that you have seen in the previous lecture. Again, we will generate a PSK modulated digital signal. Look at how it can be transmitted to passband, recover it again at the baseband and recover the original transmitted symbols when using a rectangular pulse. The next digital modulation approach that we will consider is phase shift keying. Here, the symbols phase conveys information and the different values of phases correspond to different symbols. For example, if we define BK as being one of E power J 2 pi K upon N, where K takes values 0, 1, 2 or a value up to N minus 1, then there are N possible phase values and each of these corresponds to a different symbol. This particular approach can convey one of N different symbols. Let us now take the example of 8 PSK. Let us now take the example of 8 PSK. Here, one of 8 possible phase values equally spaced give you the symbol. For example, e power j 2 pi times 0 upon 8 is this particular symbol. e power j 2 pi times 1 upon 8 is this particular symbol. e power j 2 pi times 2 upon 8 is this symbol and so on. As you can see, if you ascribe bits to each of these, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and so on, then one of three possible bits are conveyed by these symbols. In this case, as we mentioned, only the phase and not the amplitude conveys the information. Therefore, just by checking the phase of the received symbol, you should be able to recover your bits. In terms of our signals perspective, SK of T can be treated as BK times Psi 1 of T, where Psi 1 is the waveform that you use for signaling. For example, it can be a rectangular pulse or a sink or so on. And it's a one dimensional signal because the same signal is being scaled by just a unit magnitude and phase varying complex number. Let us now explore how we can put together a PSK simulation on GNU radio. We will be keeping with the same parameters that we have been using, that is a carrier frequency of 8 kilohertz and a symbol rate of a thousand symbols per second. Let us begin. Let us first set our sampling rate to 64,000 as we have been using so far. Next, we will first find a way to generate our random PSK symbols. Before that, let us also fix the PSK size. We'll use PSK4 at the beginning, but in order to have flexibility over the PSK size, let us create a variable. Control F for command F. It will say VAR and we'll grab the variable. We will call this variable capital N as we chose in our slides as well and keep it as 4. Now, let us first grab a random source so that we can generate random PSK symbols. Control F or Command F. Random. We have our random source that we will bring here. Minimum is 0. Maximum we will set as N, which is what we chose over here as the variable. 
and let us make it a 1024 samples with repeats so that we can get a constant stream of random symbols. We'll say OK. Next, we need a chunks to symbol that can be that can map the number 0, 1, 2, 3 to one of the PSK symbols. So let's grab a chunks to symbols. Control F for command F. C H U N N. And we'll grab this chunks to symbols. Double click the chunks to symbols. The dimension will be 1. Now for symbol table, it is inconvenient for us to have to write the symbol table every time we change n. In fact, the very reason why we use these variables is for convenience in GNU radio so that the symbol tables and such other dependents can be automatically recalculated. So before we complete our chunks to symbols, let us first use the power of Python. We will import numpy for our assistance. So control F for command F. We'll say import. Grab the import block. We will then say double click on this and type import numpy. This allows us to use the numpy functions to create our symbols very very easily. Now let us double click on our chunks to symbols. Our symbols are just e power j 2 pi k upon n where k varies from 0 through n minus 1. To get the numbers from 0 through n minus 1 we can say numpy dot a range n. <clears throat> this gives us the values which k can take. Now we must do j 2 pi k by n. So let me just do 1 j into 2 into numpy dot pi times this upon n and this belongs within a numpy dot exp. So I'll put this in brackets and I'll say exp. So if you see what we have done, we have done numpy.exp of j 2 pi k upon n. Let's say ok. And now let us connect our random source and this chunks to symbols should be connected to a throttle. So control F for command F. We'll grab our throttle. Let us then have a time sync and see what these symbols look like. So control F for command F and we'll grab a QTGY time sync. And if we execute this, we will see some things essentially looking like this. The values which the blue, which is the real part and the red, which is the, which is the imaginary part take are either plus one or minus 1 or 0. That's what we see over here. But what is more useful is if we grab a QTGUI constellation sync, control F or command F and constellation sync. If we look at the constellation sync, this will tell us the real part and imaginary part simultaneously. And as you can see, you have four possible values which correspond to e power j 2 pi 0 upon 4, e power j 2 pi 1 upon 4, which is exactly j, e power j 2 pi 2 upon 4, which is minus 1, and e power j 2 pi 3 upon 4, which is minus j. So these are the four possible symbols that are being produced by the chunks to symbols module. This makes complete sense if because we chose n as 4, we get these four symbols. If you choose n as 8, you will get one of 8 symbols. Next, our goal will be to send these symbols at 1000 symbols per second. To do so, 
let us first remove this qt gui time sync and place an interpolating fir filter so let's make some space control f for command f interp and grab this interpolating fir filter we'll connect the throttle to this interpolating fir filter double click this set the interpolation to we need a thousand symbols per second therefore we must interpolate it by samp rate divided by thousand so we'll say samp rate double divide because we want integer division by thousand and the taps we want exactly all ones because we want to use rectangular pulse shape therefore i'll just say numpy dot ones samp rate now if we grab a time sync control f for command f and time sync and place the time sync over here and execute this flow graph let us stop this <clears throat> you will see that each of these symbols begins at 9 milliseconds ends at 10 and then this begins at 1 milli sorry 13 milliseconds ends at 14 so each of these symbols essentially takes two values and these values are separated by exactly 1 millisecond to get a better idea of why these are the exact values it's very easy to check our symbols are essentially 1 j minus 1 minus j so when you have a 1 or minus 1 then the imaginary part essentially is zero which is why whenever the red is high you can see that the blue is zero or red is low blue is zero when you have j or minus j the real part is zero which means whenever the blue is high or low the red is zero which makes complete sense in other words you can easily verify that the complex signal being shown here its values are exactly one of these constellation values for example over here the blue value is 1 the red value is 0 that means this is 1 plus j 0 which corresponds to this symbol over here the blue value is minus 1 while the red value is 0 which means it corresponds to this symbol finally over here the red value is 1 while the blue value is 0 this corresponds to j which is this symbol so this makes complete sense our next task will be for us to take this to the carrier frequency and then get back the baseband signal for that let us create a variable called fc so we would say control f for command f variable grab this variable double click it call it fc and value is 1000 sorry 8000 okay now our task is for us to modulate this particular waveform if you remember to modulate this we can multiply this by e par j 2 pi fct and take the real part we are going to take that approach but as the flow graph becomes messy we don't want to take wires across so let's use virtual sinks and sources so i'm going to use control f or command f type virtual i'll grab a virtual sink and i'll also place a virtual source in anticipation I double click this virtual sync call it psk base band connect it over here and double click this and call it psk base band as you can see the color gets automatically chosen based on what you connected the next task for us is to modulate this or multiply this by e par j 2 by fct and as we have seen in the past a simple way to get e par j 2 by fct on gnu radio is to grab a signal source 
control f or command f grab the signal source drag it over here and we keep it as a complex signal source okay we'll keep the frequency as fc okay amplitude can be 1 that's okay now what we will do is we will multiply these two so control f for command f we will grab the multiply we will multiply these two this is essentially x of t times e power j 2 pi f c t then we need the real part so control f for command f type real and we get complex to real connect this and then we will grab a time sink control f for command f utgui time sink and let us set the time sink to float let's add a grid let's add auto scale and connect our signal over here and execute this flow graph now you will see that we get this kind of passband signal now this passband signal looks innocuously like a cosine but there is something special let's actually stop it and zoom in a little so exactly at 10 milliseconds there is a phase change and then we have a nice sinusoid and again exactly at let's say e 12 milliseconds there is a phase change of course even at 11 there could have been there wasn't that's that could be because the phase was retained as is okay let us continue running this and we'll you know so you have these potential phase changes happening for example over here at 14 milliseconds there is a phase change and at 15 milliseconds there is a phase change so the information is essentially conveyed within the phase of the waveform this phase variation essentially captures the phase variation of the baseband waveform in fact if you write out the equations you will find that the actual passband waveform you get looks like cos of 2 pi fct plus some phi of t where this phi of t essentially has this particular phase within each symbol duration so as you can see at around 3 milliseconds 4 milliseconds 5 milliseconds so every 1 millisecond there is a phase change that conveys the symbol and by observing the phase within each of these intervals you will be able to find out which waveform or rather which symbol is being sent during that interval now however our task is for us to get back some waveform that looks like this because this is our baseband waveform the question is how do we recover this kind of waveform from this passband signal for that we must take this passband waveform multiplied by cos 2 pi f c t times root 2 multiplied by minus root 2 sin 2 pi f c t and filter out the two f c components and then combine them to get back our symbol signal let's do that let's make some space in our flow graph by just making things a little more compact all right so now what we need to do is we need to take this particular symbol and we need to the signal rather and multiply it by cos 2 pi fct and minus sin 2 pi fct multiplied by root 2 so let's grab a signal source so control f for command f signal source grab a signal source place it here double click it we'll have a real signal source frequency will be fc amplitude will be root 2 and then we will create a copy control c or command c control v or command v place it just below double click this we want a sign and we want a negative sign so that we can get root 2 times minus sign 2 pi f c t now we will grab a pair of multipliers so control f for command f multiply we'll double click this we'll call it float now we are going to multiply the signal source with the received signal we'll copy this control c or command c control v or command v connect this 
over here connect this over here and now we will create a complex signal out of these two after taking out the 2fc component remember your passband signal has an fc component these cosines and sines have an fc component so we need to take out the 2fc component so let us grab the interpolating fir filter so control f for command f in type interp interpolating fir filter we will double click this oh let's not use an interpolating fir filter i'm sorry let's use a low pass filter so control f for command f type low we'll grab the low pass filter because we just need to specify some few components over here we'll set the cutoff frequency as fc because we need to remove the 2fc component and we'll set a transition width of about a kilohertz we will call it float to float interpolating we'll copy this control c control v for paste come or command c command v for mac users connect these over here because we need these two parallel filters and we will then combine these two waveforms into a single complex waveform so control f for command f so we will grab the float to complex over here connect these and to visualize our symbol on the same time sink we can double click this we'll set grid yes auto scale yes and we'll say two inputs and we'll connect this over here and we can run this flow graph now if you run this flow graph you can see that there is some very minor scaling issues the scaling issues are because we did not take care of the root 2 when we constructed the modulation waveform so let us first address that so over here we will choose this as one point 414 to make sure that we have the correct energy now we have amplitudes correct but there is a certain non overlapping between three signal 3 and 4 and signal 1 and 2 as well as some distortion the distortion is very simple because we are using rectangular signaling this rectangular signal when passed through the low pass filter at the receiver side when coming back to baseband causes those high frequency components to get removed and therefore you have this gibbs phenomenon like effect that is something that we will ignore but more importantly they are not aligned why the reason is because this low pass filter causes some delay it is a causal implementation and it causes some delay so one way to address this would be to just delay the output of the interpolating fir filter over here and then just see how we can align them so let's see let's add a qt range to adjust the delay so control f for command f type range qt gui range and we will double click it and call it delay and we will type make the type as integer default value 0 stop 100 step 1 this is fine now we are going to add a delay so control f or command f type delay we'll grab the delay over here and we will set the delay to actually the delay vary variable that corresponds to the range connect the output of this interpolating fir filter to the input here connect this over here now it if we execute the flow graph you get this range and because the fir filter has a group delay of roughly 75 if you make this delay 75 you will now see that there's a reasonable overlap let's actually stop this signal 1 and signal 2 correspond to the original input baseband waveform signal 3 and signal 4 are what you get when you go to passband come back to baseband after those two filtering operations let's compare signal 1 and signal 3 so if you look at signal 1 and signal 3 they have a beautiful overlap barring that little oscillatory behavior because of your filter 
Similarly, if you look at signal 1, signal 2 and signal 4 rather, they also exhibit very close relationship. So therefore, what have you done? You have gone from a passband signal back to baseband and if you overlap the signals, it is very evident that the received signal and the transmit signal are almost the same. The reason for the slight difference is because of the fact that the high frequency components are getting eliminated by the low pass filter. If you really want to honor the frequency constraints and make these waveforms match, then you must design your transmit waveform using a pulse other than a rectangular pulse so that you have a band closer to band limited signal. One exercise that you can do is to observe the frequency components of these signals. You will find that they are very close except that the low pass filtering causes the rectangle in your signal 3 and signal 4 to be slightly distorted. As a final step, let us just modify this n to 8 by double clicking and setting it to 8 and run our simulation. Now you can see that there are more phase variations that are being observed and if you see our constellation, it takes one of 8 possible values and our waveform also seems to indicate that there are more values in the baseband. Why is this the case? The reason is because the values which you now take are for let's say the imaginary value is plus 1 over here it's 1 upon root 2 here it's 0 minus 1 upon root 2 and minus 1 so there are 5 possible values so if you stop and let's look at the original waveform you can see that it takes 1 then it takes 0 0.707 which is 1 upon root 2 0 and then it takes, uh, you know, over here it takes minus 1, minus 0 0.707. So as you can see, more values are there and you can see different kinds of phase variations as well. So if you write, if you make your flow graph rather in a very generic manner, you can easily simulate various other PSKs. Let's also check out PSK 16 and you'll see that there are 16 possible phases and you can see different kinds of phase variations. In this lecture, we have put together a phase shift keying or PSK based system. In this system, we have essentially embedded the messages that you wish to transmit in the phase of the waveform and you have seen that both in the baseband waveform and in the passband waveform, variations in the phase can be used to infer information. In the next lecture, we will be exploring different modulation formats, particularly what happens when you combine phase shift keying and amplitude shift keying, in which case you end up with quadrature amplitude modulation. We will also explore an orthogonal modulation scheme called frequency shift keying, wherein the frequency of the signal varies and is used to convey information.